All right, we are here to talk with Robert Tagoni about, I'm gonna get emotional during this, I can tell already. <laughs> uh, the world played chess. So sometimes, a lot of times I've been asking, you can see my refrigerator there. A lot of times I've been asking the author to describe their book and the authors never love to do that. So I'm gonna do it and you can correct me if I um, miss something, which I can't imagine I did because this, shut up the phone, because uh, this was a very emotional journey for me. So the story has three narratives. There's William, who's a Vietnam vet, and we have his journal from when he was in the war. Then there's Vincent. Vincent, we have in two timelines. A timeline when he was on a construction site working with William, who's now older. And then present day, where his son is about the same age he was when he worked with Vincent and uh, William was when he was in the war. So we get this uh, tiered vision of of come of these boys coming of age right. and uh it, it's obviously different for each of them but what i found and i wrote in my review is there's a fourth narrative i think we all bring to this and that is what are our thoughts about the vietnam war uh, and and whether it's from newsreels or stories for me uh Growing up, my dad wrote a short story about a boy he grew up with who went to war and got killed. And the story was about them going to Coney Island and uh, riding the rides and getting the, so he wrote this, my dad wrote this story about this friend um, who they called wire hair. He had red wiry hair and going on the amusement rides and getting cakes afterwards and getting hot dogs afterwards and now, this person doesn't exist anymore. So how did I do? Very good, excellent. Um, you know, one of the things that really thrilled me was to find that um, when it came out, it, it rose to number one on Amazon in, in uh, coming of age, because that's really what the book is about. It's really a coming of age story. And as you, as you mentioned, um, it's not about necessarily about all men, it, uh, the, the, the pr protagonists and the main characters are men, but it's really a story for all of us, you know, male, female, uh, we all have the, those moments in life that we go through where we can look back later and say, yeah, that was the moment I had to grow up. Uh, you know, it can be what Vincent experienced on the construction site. It can be what William experienced in Vietnam, it can be what Vincent's son Bo experienced during his senior year of high school of the loss of a friend. It can be, you know, what we all experience when a, a parent dies, for instance, you know, and you suddenly realize you are you are an adult, you know, your your parent is no longer there. Um, it can be a, a number of different things, and we all go through it, and we all have different experiences. So that was very gratifying to me because that, that was really the story that I set out to write. Actually, I have a question about it was a question I was going to ask later, but uh, in your in the notes at the end of this book, you you do say you intended to write a coming of age story, but you did not intend to write a story about Vietnam. So why don't we just shoot right to that now? So you know what what happened basically was um, I asked my son Joe, who was twenty three at the time, if he would read a, a draft of the book um, because you know there's some things in there that are loosely based upon his senior year when he played high school football and I just wanted to make sure he was comfortable with it and he came to me and he said um, you know what would be really cool dad it would be really cool to understand what happened to William in Vietnam so that we can understand why he's the way he is and 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 why he had such an impact on Vincent. And he said, um, you know, I don't know anything about the Vietnam War. And it was such a pivotal moment in, in, our, in our country's history. You know, do you think you could create something? And so that, that's what got me really thinking. I didn't want to create flashbacks. 
but I, I wanted to create something that, um, that William would give to Vincent, and that was the journal. And I wanted William to say to him, all I ask is that you read it in the order that it was written so that you'll understand. Because that was really important to William. Um, it was very, very important that, that Vincent would understand what happened to him so that he could be, he could empathize with him. Um, and I think that's, that, that was also uh, purposeful because I think a lot of us don't understand what happened to so many young men in that war. And more recently, what happened to young men and young women in, in the more recent wars. And so we can't empathize with them. We don't empathize with, you know, the post-traumatic stress and, and the things that they went through. And uh, so I thought it was really a brilliant idea on my son's part. And I thought it really elevated the book. It, it does. And one of the questions I had was, it, it seems as though you, you read, did you read some uh, real journals? It comes across as, I mean, and this is what all good characters should do. It doesn't come across as William being a character you invented. This journal comes across as as real. It reads real. So, did you what you based it on? Yeah. So, I mean, I just did. I did a ton of research. Um, I had two Vietnam veterans that were willing to speak to me. Um, one was willing to read my manuscript, um, Bob Mangan, who was a, a gunny sergeant uh, in the Marines. And then um, I had some Vietnam vets that just said, no, they didn't want to go back there. And I respected that. But there are a lot of books out there, uh, not a lot, but there are, there are many books out there that are written by Vietnam vets about the experience that they had when they were in Vietnam. So I read probably about 15 uh, firsthand accounts of experiences um, in Vietnam. I read a book on a photographer uh, who was in Vietnam, uh, a Marine photographer. Um, I watched, you know, all the all the movies that are out there that you you can probably name many of them. I watched all of those and I watched some obscure ones and I watched the documentaries and Ken Burns' documentary. And then I read a lot of manuals that um, my Marine uh, Vietnam vet provided me so I can understand what the Marine experience uh, was like in particular. And, you know, what I usually do when I research is I keep researching and I keep writing as long as I'm finding things that uh, I didn't know. But once I start, once the stories start to repeat themselves, then I realize that I have that I have probably exhausted, you know, a lot of the sources. So, um, you know, I just read until um, I began to feel like I was the stories were repeating. In other words, that a lot of these veterans went through the same thing. And um, once I got to that point, I felt comfortable that I could sit down and begin to really create William's journal. So when you were reading all this material, were you reading it as a researcher or do, were you almost like how sometimes actors get affected by the role they're studying and it, it feels like they're going through it themselves in a way, obviously not, but. Yeah, well, I think, I think that's what authors do. I mean, I think authors create characters, but in order for the character to become real, like you discussed, it's important that the author, um, that the that character become real to the author and that the author, you know, take on that role uh, to, a, to a certain extent. And, um, you know, I, I started the research really um, back in 1979. Uh, I didn't realize it at the time, but, you know, those moments when we would get done with a, a job uh, and I would sit in the garage and, you know, we'd have a couple of beers and so suddenly they'd start talking. They didn't, they didn't. Let me pause right now. Um... For people who don't know, tell us what you're talking about, what the, the parallel between what you experienced and what's in the book when you yeah. were saying the book. So my senior year in high school, I, you know, I graduated from an all boys high school uh, in a lily white uh, community that, you know, there was no crime. Uh, kids delivered newspapers on their bicycles. Uh, you know, we played we played three flies up in, in uh, Ray Park. Uh, we went out and had cokes and and uh, you know sandwiches. It was just very bucolic, incredibly bucolic. And I I got a job through my brother-in-law for the summer, and I always worked, so I always had a job. And so this there was this job as a laborer on this construction crew. It was a small constru construction crew. There was just the four of us, and two 
two of the, 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 the guy who ran the job and the primary, his primary worker were Vietnam vets. And this was 1979. So they had been back, but not for a long period of time. And they were trying to find their way. And we would get done with working and uh, we'd go into the garage and, you know, have a couple of beers and they might start talking about some of the things that they went through. Uh, sometimes it was if we went out for to grab a bite to eat and have a beer after work, they might start to talk about some of the things they went through. Um, William was really an amalgamation of several of the stories that I heard from both of them. Uh, but I thought it would have more impact coming from just one person, which I made William. But, you know, I worked for I worked for. Uh, the character in the book's name is Todd. I worked for him for a number of summers and spring breaks and Christmas breaks. And he always had work for me. I mean, he really helped me get through college, pay my way through college. And the more I got to know him and the more time I spent with him on tile jobs, on brick jobs, whatever we were doing, you know, we would travel places. The more he would open up and, and begin to tell me some of the things that he experienced and that he went through. And what was most, uh, what was most moving for me, what, what had the most impact was the knowledge that he grew up in a town right next door to me. I mean, he grew up in the same bucolic little neighborhood, um, but he was different than I was. Um, he, he had friends, he, he was a self-proclaimed punk and he had friends, they'd walk down the street and they'd, they'd snap, there was a way of hitting the side mirrors on the cars. And if you hit them just right, the mirror would pop off and they'd leave just dozens of these cars with the mirrors popped off. So, you know, he got out of high school and he got his draft notice. And suddenly he went from San Carlos, California to Vietnam. And, uh, you know, you got to grow up quickly. And that's really what the book is about is there's no manual on how to be a man. There's no manual on how to be a husband. There's no manual on how to be a father, you know, and it, it, it's, it, it's sad in some ways because it's probably the most important job that we do as men, uh, be husbands, be fathers. And, um, Sometimes, you know, you, 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 you grow up when you're in college. Sometimes you don't grow up until after college. Sometimes it's in a war. Sometimes men never grow up. And, you know, you see those things all the time, you know. So um, it was really, a, it was really a, a, a pivotal kind of moment in my life uh, that summer. So when you have, um, so one of the things that struck me was there's a, uh, there's a scene, I don't remember what's happening, but uh, Vincent comments that uh, William and Todd just live in the moment. They're not able to look forward. And that's obviously connected to how they had to live life in Vietnam. And it struck, struck me that sending these young kids to war helps form they, they don't have the chance to become who they might have been they're in this situation where they're kind of forged by fire into this way of dealing with life that may not work may or may not work very well for real life and it almost seems like somebody who had their stuff together a little more who knew where, who they were could handle better going to war and maintaining some identity that was separate from the wars. Can you talk about that a little? Yeah, I mean, the, the problem is that uh, if you get someone that has too much experience and, and, and too much knowledge, they may say, I'm not doing that. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not going there. So what happened in World War I and World War II was there was no age limit. And, and you know, the, the movie Saving Private Ryan, you know, it talks about that with Tom Hanks when he's, you know, he's the captain. He's in his like his 30s, I think. And he says, I'm a, I'm a high school chemistry teacher or a math teacher. I don't remember which. I don't, you know, I don't know what I'm doing here. I'm doing the best that I can. Um, these 18 year old young men, you know, one of the reasons why they, you know, they drafted them at 18 years of age is because they were still moldable. And I talk about how, you know, they say run through that brick wall and they'll get up and they'll run through that brick wall and they'll keep running through that brick wall, not realizing that nobody has ever run through that brick wall. But they become, when we're 18 years old, we're, 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 uh, we're, we're not vulnerable, we're invulnerable, we're invincible. And that's really what they wanted. They wanted these, these young guys who they could mold to do things. Um, one of the things I talk about in the acknowledgements was the use of, of, the, of the slurs, you know, gooks, chinks, uh, slant heads, you know, all those things. Um, you know, 
we have sensitivity readers now uh, in this day and age. And you know that was brought up to me by the sensitivity reader. And I said, I agree with you 100%. But unfortunately, you know, that was the lexicon that was used in Vietnam. And it was used for a particular reason. And it's been used, if you go back and look at articles, it's been used throughout history. Dehumanize the enemy so that your soldiers don't think or realize they're killing a human being. They're not killing a human being, they're killing a gook. No, I mean, this is a human being. And, um, you know, those are things that I think uh, as we get older, we begin to have greater empathy for and better understanding. And we're more inclined to say, I'm not doing that. So, you know, when, when, when these guys were in Vietnam, I, I talk in one scene about this, if, you know, Cruz, uh, Victor Cruz, uh, um, Williams, you know, um, Sergeant, he was 22 years old. He was an old man. It's you know, funny. Man. I, I, you know, when you say 22, I'm like, no, he wasn't. He was like 35 or something, yeah. but, uh, that's just because he's in charge. Yeah. And he, he'd been through, he'd been through it. He'd been through it. You know, he was on his second tour and he'd been through it and he had lived in the bush and, and that became his home. And so, you know, he was in charge and, but he wasn't, he was a young, he was a young man. He was only 22 years old. It's crazy. And that's the thing that as you read this book, that's the theme that comes up over and over again is these poor kids, these poor kids, what you asked them to do was just, it's, un, it's undoable. And, and one of the quotes I have here was, uh, this is William from his journal. I was sent to kill human beings. I wasn't sure if I could do it. And, you know, they, they, they have to do it, but kind of a little side point, um, I've heard there's a lot, of, a lot of research that when people actually get there having to kill, they, they a lot of times don't, they go a, around. So it's like in the general direction of who they're meant to kill. Um, but, but the statistics are, are that a lot of people aren't able to do it. Did you come across that in your research? No, but I came across it in one of the stories that, that Todd told me. Uh, the character Todd told me, and and what he told me was, and and I and I it's in it's in the book. You know, there's those you, you watch those scenes in the movies where you know guys got their head over the log and they're aiming their gun and they're shooting, and he said that was that's ridiculous. That we didn't do that in the bush. You know, that's not what we did. If you were smart, what you did was you laid down behind a log or a, or a, a rock and you just lifted the gun over your head and you just sprayed it, um, because you know two reasons for that. One, you're terrified. And two, um, you don't know if you hit anybody. You don't know if it was your bullet that hit the person that you might find later. So you don't, you don't, you don't internalize it as I just, I just killed somebody. Um, but yes, that did happen over there. And um, you know, you think about the impact that it would have on somebody so young. It's, it's, um, you know, I, one of the things I, I dedicated the book to, to all Vietnam veterans is. It, and I, and I can Can you read that. Can you do you have it memorized or can I read it? So no, you, you, you can um, you can memorize it. I mean, I can or I can read it. I just say you read it. You read it. I, it's oh. a powerful to all the men and women who served in the Vietnam War heroes, every one of them. And, you know, and I say the same thing about all the men and women who served in Afghanistan and who served in Iraq and, and went through those horrible times and things. Um, they're heroes. Those, 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 those individuals, those people are heroes uh, for what they did. Um, the other day I was in the airport and I was traveling and uh, the, over the loudspeaker, they said, are there, is there any military, you know, traveling? And probably these four or five guys, you know, all the short hair and everything, they all stepped up to the line. And uh, this is with, you know, the whole thing in Afghanistan going on. Uh, the withdrawal and everything. And the people in the airport, including myself, applauded them, just spontaneously applauded them. Um, you know, what, what they do is, is heroic um, to, to, put, to put yourself out there and to know the consequences of what you're doing and to do it anyway. That's what a hero is. And that's one of the things that Vincent learns from William. He, he tells him, what do you think a hero is? And then he, he says, you're wrong. You know, a hero is a guy that that knows what's going to happen, but does it anyway. That's that's a hero. Um, so, um, yeah, there's a there's a lot of parts of, of the novel that are 
really emotionally uh, difficult for a lot of readers because um, because I think we all begin to realize what we what what you know what these eighteen year old men went through. Right, and another thing that I found myself thinking about, and these are all just my it was you know my parents' um, generation, their friends are the ones that um, you know, they were involved in. Some of them were involved in protests. Some of them went to the war. But my impression always was when these vets came home, they didn't, they didn't have the, the, the love you know, and, and the, that kind of support system that like World War II heroes might have had coming back or World War I. And what a, a, a trauma that must have been to feel like they went through this terrible ordeal and not even be necessarily respected for it. Yeah, you know, I mean, not only did they not have the support of the public, they didn't have the support of the medical profession because the medical profession really didn't understand it. Um, I was really surprised when I was doing my research that PTSD really did not come into vogue and they really didn't understand what it was. And so they really couldn't treat a lot of these young men until, you know, later in this really late in the 70s. Um, but, you know, uh, one of the things that was made an impression on me many years ago was I was at my wife's grandmother's house with her. She had remarried after her first husband died and Leonard had served in World War II. And we were watching some show. I don't know what it was. I don't remember. But there was something about World War II. And I said to Leonard, um, hey, you know, you've, you've never really told me about what happened in, in World War II. And Leonard began to stutter violently. And um, Mama turned and looked at me and, and rolled her eyes like saying, you do not go there. And it took him about 15, 20 seconds to sort of pull himself together and then like a white sheet went over and he was fine. It was PTSD. I'm, I'm absolutely certain it was PTSD. We just didn't know what it was. And so Leonard had never been treated, never dealt with it. And, and that's what happened to a lot of these guys is um, the, you know, the medical profession wasn't their fault. They just, they didn't know. Um, now they do. And, you know, hopefully that's something that will, will be better for the men and women who serve in, in, you know, the places that, that they've had to serve. Yeah, and hopefully it will come into the decision of, of where they're sent or not, that we understand what we're asking yeah. and, and that it's deemed as vital and important enough to ask these, these people to do, to do that. Uh, on a different note, you had said that this book is a, a, was a labor of love for you. And what I've found the books that I get sent, the books that I am, I want to do one of these chats about, which is not that many, I don't know, um, only the ones that I'm inspired to that, that really speak to me are always a labor of love. And, and the author always speaks about the characters the way you speak about William, Vincent, Bo, they're, they're, they're real, they're alive. Yeah. that you know and that's what we go for that's what we shoot for i mean we want uh we want the reader to close a book and wonder what happens next we want the reader to think i i hope he's going to be okay you know i did an interview the other day with a, a woman who was down in florida and um she really started to choke up and she said i will never look out my kitchen window into my backyard again and not think about william and um, it was really moving. It was really touching. It could tell that that she, the, the character was very much alive for her. And you know, the, the truth, Amy, is the character is alive for all of us. Uh, you know, I'm I'm significantly older than you, I'm sure, but I remember these two. Years. <laughs> <laughs> I remember years. I remember. Graduated these... from high school in '79. I graduated in '89. So. Okay. So I mean, I remember these two men that I worked with, and they were William. And I'm sure there are, are people today that are married to veterans of the Afghan war, the Iran war, whatever the situation is. And they're very real to them because they've experienced, you know, similar, very similar environments, very similar situations. Well, that's true. When I was, uh, sometimes I get dressed up. And today I had this t-shirt on because I was doing stuff earlier. I was like, well, you wouldn't want me to change. 
<laughs> I literally thought that, you know, um, and that's exactly what you're talking about was, you know, he was like, ah, don't change for me. That's fine. <laughs> we have on. So you say in, in this, um, also in your notes that this, you know, isn't a memoir, but there's lots of pieces. We talked about the construction piece, but I was also curious, you have right in the beginning, Vincent doesn't become a writer but he thought about it. So I was curious, I was curious about that. And, and he, he's not able to, and then um, he's not able to go to Stanford, but you did. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I, uh, um, you know, a lot of it is, is biographical in terms of, um, I wanted to be a writer, I went to law school and I practiced law until, um, really, I think about my 30s. And then I moved up to Seattle and I practiced part time. But, but, you know, I, I chickened out, I chickened out from from staying working with the Los Angeles Times newspaper. Uh, I had the ability to do that. and I turned it down. And it was just it was, you know, it was fear. It was, you know, I was a young 21 year old. I mean, you know, I explained, you know, in the book, I came from a pretty naive background. And so, you know, to ask me to, to be out in, in the middle of the San Gabriel Valley where I knew absolutely no one and, you know, start my career there and not know where my career was going to take. There were just a lot of unknown factors. I wanted to get home, you know, to San Francisco. And, and so, um, yeah, there's a, that's, a, that's dreams. You know, one of the things that William says in the prologue is he says, dreams are hard to catch, aren't they? And they are. Most of us don't have the, 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 um, the pleasure, the blessing of doing what we really set out to do that we love to do. I'd say most people do what they can to make a living, uh, to take care of themselves, to take care of their families. They make sacrifices. And a lot of times those dreams, they get pushed aside by necessity. And, um, you know, I've just been very blessed that, um, that I that I did take that that moment that that to step away and say, this is not what I wanted to do. You know, as somebody said to me the other day, that took a lot of courage, and I said, no, it didn't. It took a lot of fear, because you know I was afraid that I would wake up one day and I'd look in the mirror and say, I never took the shot. You know what what happened to my dreams? What did I do? And that's you know it's very sobering. Yeah, gosh, there are a lot of. Uh... There are a lot of authors who have had a background um, as lawyers. I wonder if it's like if there's some connection there where they start off, they start off in writing and then they do the lawyer thing for a bit, but then the writing calls them back. I think that's interesting. Speaking of writing, are you going back to thriller writing or is that it for you? Because this is your second kind of coming of age book that's of a different type. Yeah, I, you know, I never know. I, I never really know. Um, I'm in the process of writing a, a standalone novel involving a lawyer, but it's not going to be necessarily a courtroom drama, but it's going to be a, a novel about a, uh, a young 30 uh, year old lawyer who leaves the prosecuting attorney's office and goes into business with her dad and her two sisters. So it's going to have some family drama in it and it's going to have some thriller aspects to it, um, some mystery aspects to it. Um, and I'll just I'll just see where it takes me. Um, my my editor at Lake Union uh, said to me after I wrote Sam Hell, all right, I you know I expect another novel out of you, um, meaning another you know literary novel if you if that's you know what you want to call it. And um, and she said, but it's going to take you about three years, and it did. It took 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 about three years, and you know it's different than thriller writing because. With my Tracy Crossway series, all I have to really think about is, okay, well, what's the next case Tracy's going to get? And I have my characters and off I go. But with, uh, with the, um, you know, with the, the literary novels, there's, I have to think of what the story is. You know, what's the story? What's the theme? And everything has to come from scratch. So is there another one in me? I, you know, I would say, yes, I think there is. I mean, these are the books I grew up reading. This, is, this was really, if I had set out to write you know, this is what I wanted to write. This is what I wanted to do. And people ask me, well, how, how do you go from writing thrillers to writing literary? I really, this is what I read. I read The Count of Monte Cristo. I read The Old Man in the Sea. I read, I mean, I read all those books. And that's what I wanted to do. But dreams are hard to catch, aren't they? So, uh -huh. so just one, one more question. 
uh, and you, you addressed it a little bit, but let's just, um, let's just ask it. What do you say to people who, you know, see, now it's about Vietnam and see like the military people on the cover and are scared of, scared of the emotions they'll feel, what's on the other side for them? Well, one of the things I, I really want to, I hope is, um, is I hope that, that women give the book an opportunity and aren't, um, aren't uh, dissuaded because it has, you know, three soldiers on the cover. Um, it's not a book about Vietnam. It's a book about growing up. It's a book about um, finding your destiny and breaking away. And as I talked about earlier, that's not gender specific. It's not even age specific. I mean, it happens to all of us and it happens at different points in, in all our lives. And that's really what the book is about. It's about those pivotal moments in our life that change us. And whether you're male or female, whether you're young or you're old, you, you will experience those moments. You have experienced those moments and, and they did change you. And I think that's the universal uh, thing that will hold everybody um, together and, and make this book hopefully something that is uh, a poignant for, uh, for, every, for all readers. My prediction. Thank you, Robert. Thank you for Thank joining you. us. Thank you very much for having me. The, 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 the World Played Chess, it's available now everywhere. You expect to buy a book. Thank you so much. Thank you very much.